Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial, my name is Attempster. Today I'm going to be going over how to add round progress bars to your games in the Blender Game Engine. Now this concept can be applied to any game engine really, but in this tutorial I'll be going over how to do it in the Blender Game Engine. So basically we're going to be making something that looks like this with a round progress bar that is bound to a property, as you can see in the top left hand corner. So open up a new file, file new. Or just open up Blender if you don't already have it open. Blender Game Engine, GeoSL, animation frame rate of 60. I'm going to delete the cube here, so X and delete. Then I'm going to press numpad 7, Control Alt and numpad 0. Then I'm going to press Shift A and add myself a circle. This here, I'm going to press Tab and then F to make a face and then Tab again. This here is going to be the back face of our timer. So let's go ahead, move that down and give it a material. So new shadeless and let's make it fairly dark alright number 0 again and here I'm going to press shift A and add myself a, another circle this here is going to be one of the sides so I'm going to press tab, let's scroll in, press A to deselect, B to box select and select one half like so of the vertices then X and delete vertices then I'm going to press A to select the remaining half, press F to make a face and then tab out of edit mode then I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate and press R Y 180. As you notice, the color is different, which means that the normal is facing down instead of upwards. This will be a problem if we have back facing enabled, as this side won't get rendered. So let's press Tab to go into edit mode, UV and shading, and flip direction. Now these here need the same material as the back facing, so select that. Now this here is going to be called, uh, let's call it left wipe, and this one here is going to be called right wipe. And so now what we're going to do is press shift A again, and actually select both of these and move them down a bit. Alright, then shift A and add ourselves another circle. Now this here is going to be our actual timer, so let's press numpad 0. Then I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode. And here we'll press E to extrude and then S to scale and move it in, so roughly something like this. Again, this will be the thickness of uh, the timer going round, so up to you. I think something like that should be good. So I'm going to click and then I'm going to press A to deselect, select the left half again, and then X and delete vertices. So now we have a right half and now we just need a left half. So let's press Shift D to duplicate and then RY 180. Now you'll notice this time uh, this one is a bit darker and this one is a bit lighter. So the normals here are correct and the normals here are incorrect. You can double check by going pressing N, going into the menu here and going under display then press tab and here you can choose normals. And as you can see they're facing down which is the wrong way we want them facing towards the camera. So A to select everything and flip direction. So now what we want to do is select this left hand side here and first of all let's give it a material, make it bright pink so we can see it and shadeless. Same for the left hand side and let's call this one over here uh, left prog for progress bar and call this one top right prog. And then select this one and press numpad 1 and numpad 5 to go into orthographic view and Z to go into wireframe and this here, our left side we want to press 1 and we want to bring it below the wipers here. Now this one here is going to stay but we want another copy underneath so I'm going to press shift D to duplicate and then GZ move it down on the Z axes and move it underneath as well then I'm going to press numpad 1, Z to go into wireframe and then just line them up Alright, something like that, scroll out again, and there we go. So now if we press numpad 0, it should look something like this. Then I'm going to select this here and go over to our settings here. Now if you can, make sure that all of these are set to no collision, because we don't need any collision simulation for them. Uh, so setting it to no collision will save you performance. There we go, no collision. All right, and so now what we want to do with the top one here, we want to select invisible. So now we're gonna get into the game logic. So let's move over there. And on this top one here, add two visibility actuators. One makes it visible, one makes it not visible. 
minimize both of those and then what we're going to do is press shift A and add ourselves in an empty now this is going to be basically the root of the entire timer so on here what we're going to need is a property called timer and this here is going to be an integer so by default the game engine will run at 60 frames per second which means that for one second of real time you'll have 60 frames of animation time so basically what you have to do is put in the time you want so maybe I'll make it 8 seconds and then you need to multiply it by the number of frames so for me it's 60 and that will be a total of 480 so let's go over here add a property and while our timer is less than and we want the amount so while it's less than 480 on a true pulse what we want to do is add 1 to the timer as you'll notice it starts at 0 so add timer 1 and then also what we want to do is we want this to rotate within the given time now again we're going to have to do some more calculations for that so we'll go to motion join one of those in and basically 360 degrees is a full circle and what we want to do is divide that by this number here so basically 360 divided by 480 and that is 0 0.75 so in here let's put negative 0 0.75 now the negative here just means which direction it's turning positive is this way and negative is this way so for us negative is the correct direction now what we want to do is go ahead and set up some parenting so let's select this uh, left wipe I think it's actually the right one so let's quickly rename it uh, that's right and that one should be left so select the right wipe here and add ourselves a parent so go over to parent and then what we want to do is hold down shift select the empty add an always and join it in like so and then we want to parent it then what I'm going to do is go over here add myself a property and this here is going to be checking whether our timer is greater than and we want half of this value so 240 minus 1 so that will be 239 so let's add an and and now what we want to do is hold down shift select our left wipe and in here add ourselves a parent and join it in now the parent object here is just going to be the empty there we go so select that for both now one last thing we have to do is select the top one here and you'll notice we added the visibility actuators now we want to hold down shift select the empty and from here what we're going to do is join this one here to the top add ourselves a NAND controller not AND join that in there and in here join this in the bottom so now if we press numpad 0 and press play then you'll notice we have a progress bar however we do have a problem and that is that the backdrop here is very similar to the background color so let's go ahead and actually just change the background color so there we go guys that's the end product our timer bound to a property and once it reaches the end like so then it will stop and you'll be left with something like this so anyway that's the end of this tutorial hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you didn't uh, feel free to leave a like comment or share all of that stuff would be greatly appreciated if you like this sort of stuff be sure to subscribe as well so you stay up to date but apart from that again hope you enjoyed it have an awesome week and i'll see you guys in the next video